This is where we're going to start. So on the left-hand side, we have the dancing models, and on the right-hand side is the original model that we created in our 3D platform, which looks like a donut with two pointy spheres above and below. And then it looks quite dramatic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions. Part 29, Extend. That's right, our theme for today has been extending. And one of the things we did is we went back to our 3D platform and we made some more models to add to our animations. And the, these models are being inspired by the quantum electron orbits, believe it or not, of the hydrogen atom. This is the lowest energy state, the next highest, and the next highest, and there's like six more, five more. And we just, for grins, added it to one of our old animations and it, it works it you can really see that we're looking from the top on the one side and the bottom on the other so that's part of our theme of composing in multiple dimensions another part of our theme is uh, so that was this we made 3d models uh, we reviewed and vetted our reference sheets we have two more um, custom scales to work with. So let's show you those. The, the, this is the reference sheet on the left for what we call the 4554 scale. And this is the tonality reference area for it. That, that scale sounds like, the full scale sounds like this. Um, Now, did I get that right? There should be six total notes in the scale. And this needs a little fixing. There, these six notes. Da, 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 da. And the rest of this stuff is just um, basically padding on the left and right so you can hear what it sounds like. And this is the minor scale and the major scale. So you can hear the difference is the, the, just the interval here. So that's the minor ma major scale. Now we also have a 2442 two scale, this thing, and we have a reference area for that. It is a 558, so it has eight total notes in its full scale. Its minor scale sounds like this, and the major, and those sound a lot more different. It's not just, it's not just the first interval, but they have different uh, urge notes and different uh, what we call no function notes. So we did all that, and uh, and that is pre prepping us for composing in there. We then took a side trip. We were we had a curiosity question on our mind uh, that we were thinking about in the earlier, and we took time to go look at it. This is what we call our dissonance consonance model, and so there are 19 possible uh, trichords, uh, and what we did is we went through and we'd never made a, a reference score that showed us what those what those uh, intervals are. Here they are, right here. So this is what we call a 1-1 a, a one, one chord. Um, well, actually, the, back up a step. Just back up a step. These are the dyads by themselves, the pure intervals. So the, the first thing we had to look at in our consonants model is, um, where is, where is that? It's over here. Here, over here. So an interval of zero just means the first and the second note are the same. You can hear that? The next interval of one means the first note and the second note are one half step apart. 
there they are. And this has low consonants. So the consonant score is one. And, uh, and then you go up two half tones apart, three, four, five, and six. And each one of them has an assigned score. You know, is it if it's high consonants, like high, this is high, 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 and high. Then we have medium consonants, just like this. Uh, and then this one. And so we put them in consonants order. High. Medium and low. And we were listening because there was, where these things are highlighted in yellow, research showed people gave it this value, but on a purely theoretical basis, we thought, well, maybe it should have been this value, but it isn't. I don't know. We listened and we said, eh, they're about the same, but we're not going to change things. Then, because we are working on that, the dyad, which are, a dyad is two, two different notes in a row, then you go back and you say, well, what about looking at three notes in a row? And there are 19 possible combinations of three different notes in a row. And um, we went through and we sorted them in order of increasing uh, consonants. So they sound like this. And then down here is... Uh, higher consonants like that and then for grins we said well forget about whether it's consonant or not let's put it in spelling order which uh, basically means the, if the lower note is constant and then you try to make it so each time there's a step change anyway it's hard to describe looking at this which led us into let us into say, making an animation. So we actually made an animation to show what's going on with that score. And look at here. Every time there's a pause, every time there's a pause, we only want the notes on the right to be moving up. Uh, we don't want the middle note to ever be higher than the note on the right between pauses. So we call that monotonic rising order. And then, and then we got curious and said, well, we, we did this using MIDI, you know, musical interface digital something, M-I-D-I, -I, musical interface digital. But that's what this thing on the left does. Um, and, and so we compared these side by side and we had a lot of fun trying to get them to start at the same time. Anyway, so you can, the interesting thing is here, if we were using this to t test, if we, if we were trying to test, does it, um, are, is it always the case that the middle notes are, See, right there, it's easy to tell that that we've got them bounded, that the, the order of the chords is always in monotonic rising order. And the reason we want to do that, we think, and then we have a pause, and then we start over, is because of what we're calling the principle of serendipity, which means stuff that accidentally sounds good. <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, we made the score and we made the animation. 
And the whole idea of uh, accidentally sounds good together is another word for serendipity comes about from putting our chords in, in certain orders, which we call functional note order or spelling order based on the, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Um, and then we sort of accidentally, serendipitously, by uh, making this animation here, um, which was being driven by MIDI, MIDI uh, note number, we verified that we can use a MIDI all file. And then this, you see what we did here? We extracted channel one, two, and four. And those are the four parts in the score. These, the three parts in the score, I should say. So that's going to help us down the road for further an animations. So, and then we also reviewed all the work we've done to date in this series so far and kind of did a synopsis here of what we kind of want to do next, kind of new areas to branch out in. So the theme of today has been extend for a very good reason, which is we, we want to keep pushing the envelope. We want to keep composing in multiple dimensions. We feel like we've done an awful lot of, of cool stuff already. And we, we did so much, we had to kind of extract it off to the right here. This whole, this whole area here it was just from us summarizing the work to date in this series alone, um, which you have been with us on the way. So we feel like we've kind of uh, regrouped, taken inventory, um, and we still, we still got our way through vetting these scales and listening to them and setting ourselves up to, to work with some more animation techniques. So what we're going to do is, um, since we always like to play something at the end that we've composed, we'll, we'll go ahead and play for you this dissonance consonance model. And that should bring us home. So here we go. So, our ideas for next time are, um, well, we have this idea to try Blender to make uh, 3D models. And we sort of, we're thinking about that because making the pointy, what we call the pointy, uh, pointy sphere, um, technically, it should be rounded, not pointy at the bottom there. We kind of punted. Um, revisit the consonants tape table because we're still thinking about those two changes you can actually see where we said it's called medium but we're saying should it be high it's called low should it be medium well there's only two out of 13 intervals that we're proposing a change to and then do something impromptu with our two new scales just jump in with some impromptu composing kind of like we did an impromptu over here and our good old friend to be determined acknowledgments to mr spatz who shot who Stop by to say hello. That concludes today's stream. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do come back, do take care, and do keep on streaming.